Hello, good morning everyone. Can we all ask you to stand before we begin our praise and worship? And as we know in the Philippines today, it's Independence Day. So happy Independence Day. <laughs> and would you greet the person beside you? You know, to see it's good to see you here. It's good to be free. <laughs> it's good to be saved. Hallelujah. All right. So let's start this with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to gather before you to sing your praises, Lord God, and to thank you, God, for the faith that you have given, the freedom you have given, the salvation that you have given, Lord God. And so I pray that with every word, would it be from the bottom of our hearts, Lord God, and would, you, would it be pleasing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Independence Day will have one song in Tagalog. Lubos ang ulan, umagos at halos malunod na umihip ang hangin pinilit na ako ay itumba pinalon pa dilim ang langit kinapos ng liwana pagtitiwala ko'y hindi matitigan mga kumoy aking sandigan at biyaya mo'y lubos ang isip mo ang kublihan Hanggang matapos ang unos Paglipas ng pagod at luha Di maaaring huminto Ang pagbukal na pagsamba sa aking puso Tuloy ang awit Sigaw ng aking puso At halos malunod na Umihip ang hangin Pinilip na ako ay itong ba Pinalot na Pilip ang langit Kinapos ng liwala Pagpitiwala ko'y hindi matitigan Mga kumoy aking sandigan At biyaya mo'y lubos Ang bisik mo ang kublihan hanggang matapos ang unos Paglipas na pagod at luha, di maaaring huminto Ang pagbukal ng pagsamba sa aking puso Lakas mo ang talay Tuloy ang awit Tuloy ang talay At ito'y walang humpay Ang ilaw ng papuli ay Hindi mapipigil Hindi matutuyo Tuloy-tuloy ang awit para sa'yo Thank you. 
Shine through the shine 
Your praise will 
for us to be joyful, to celebrate, to remember Him, to remember His Word, to remember His faithfulness, to remember His provision, to remember His healing, to remember, you know, His goodness and His greatness and power over our lives. Lord, we thank You that every day we can declare that You are good, that we, continue, that we can continue to sing of Your praises, God. Father, I pray that for every believer, Lord, in this place and those joining us online, God, I pray that, that our lifestyle of praise, our lifestyle of worship, Lord, will not be limited when we gather together every Sunday or every service or meeting that we have, Lord, but God, every day, every waking moment, God, even Mondays, Lord, we will praise you. Even at the start of the work week, we will bless you. We will thank you. Even when we face the difficulties and issues of life, when we are in the midst of impossibilities right now, where we, when we are in the midst, Lord, of uncertainty, God, we will choose to praise the name of the Lord because you are still good and you are worthy. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, I pray that as a people, that we will be known as a people of God, as a people of praise. Lord, our praises, our worship, our thanksgiving of you will not be limited because we're, we're successful or we're having a great time or we're joyful. But God, we will be a people of praise regardless of circumstance, Lord. Because God, you are worthy. You never change. And we, therefore, we will never change in praising you in worshiping you, in serving you, in lifting up your name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that we can come together today, even for those joining us online, God. I know, Lord, that you have something in store for your people. God, as we encounter you through prayer, through the word of God being, that will be shared later, through worship, God, we thank you that you are at work even right now. Lord, hindi pa namin naririnig yung, yung preaching for today, but God, you are speaking to your people. You are healing your people. You are lifting up your people. You are, you know, you are reconciling your people. You are restoring your people even right now. So Father, I pray that we will continue to put our trust and our faith in you. Lord, I pray that every person, Lord, here and online, God will continue to have open hearts, open minds, Lord, to just allow you to speak and minister to us. We thank you, Lord. We commit this time to you. We bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord our best clap offering today. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beginning Church here face to face and, of course, online. And before you sit down, can you smile at somebody, welcome somebody today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can now all be seated. Po. Good morning. Happy Independence Day. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it good to worship the Lord? Amen. Yep. Uh, before we go to our giving, uh, we'd just like to you know, bring some things to your attention. Po. I think the slide is ready. Ayan. There. So next Sunday is our Father's Day. Yeah. So next Sunday, we'd like to encourage everyone, you know, please in, uh, invite your dads, your uncles, your lolos, your friends who are dads already, of course, and your office mates. Yan po. And, you know, invite them to our services because we have something for you next week. Ayan. And then, uh, on July 2 po, uh, we also, uh, we have a parenting seminar. It's called, It's Just a Face. So it's uh, on a Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. So also for the parents, uh, the soon-to-be parents, and those who want, you know, to be parents. Hello. <laughs> bring yourselves, you know, bring your friends who are also uh, parents as well. To the online people po, please come. And then, also, uh, to our young people. Ayan. Yeah. <laughs> Youth camp again. You know, after three years. Is it after three years? Ayan. So, uh, our youth camp po is on uh, June 29 to July 2. That's four days. And, and it's in-house. And it's called Gravity. So, for those who would like, oh, by the way, this is uh, the registration fee is $7.99. But if you would like to sponsor, if you would like to bless someone, you know, if you know someone, a young people, uh, a friend of yours, you know, maybe uh, a part of your family, a relative that you would like to send, you know, it's, it's good for us to sponsor. And if you just like to bless our young people, po, and sponsor, you can also do that. You know, you can include it uh, to your giving. Just specify on the envelope, you know, specify the amount that you would like to give. And also for those people who are giving online, bank transfer, when you, if you've noticed, if you uh, transfer, po, uh, there's a, a portion there that says note. <laughs> Just put on the note spot uh, and specify also the amount that you would like to give. Ayan. So for our giving today, uh, I'd like to share one of my, you know, uh, favorite song. Uh, yung lyrics. Can we show for you? Yeah, there. And I, I'd, I'd like, uh, I will not sing it. <laughs> I, I just like to, <laughs> I just like to read the lyrics. This is only uh, up to uh, verse 2, by the way. If you would like to uh, listen to it, you can do so. It's called, Thank You. So it says, I dreamt I went to heaven and you were there with me. He's actually talking to a friend. We walk upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing. Then someone called your name. You turned and saw a young man. This young man, you know, he was smiling as he came. Then he said, friend, you may not know me now. And then he said, but wait, now you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And then one day, when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart. And then the chorus says, Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. And then, I love this. There's another man, you know, who stand before you and said, Remember the time when a missionary came to your church and his pictures made you cry. You didn't have much money. You know, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift that you gave, and that's why I'm here. You know, I'm in heaven today. You know, but, uh, this song reminds me of one of the reasons why I give. 
and it also it should remind us one of the reasons why we give in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 13 to 15 Paul says you know because of the service by which you have proved yourself he was actually talking about their giving their support uh, to the ministry um, he said others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else and in their prayers for you uh, their prayers for you their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you thanks be to God or yeah for his indescribable gift you know when we give to the Lord whether it through monetary or our service our talent for our you know worship team and other you know behind the scene po uh, mga tao we're actually not just giving to the church and sometimes without us knowing it our giving is you know taken by our lord and then use it to reach someone without us knowing it we are actually reaching a soul and then you know advancing the kingdom of god and when we, imagine you know when we get to heaven this is our reward you know someone would just come to you and say hey friend you know you don't know me you might not know me but i was rich because of your giving so when we give you know let's believe that our giving is actually being used by god to reach someone else we assure you our ministry for we we were using our giving for the advancement of the kingdom of god so let's give generously and let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling us to give generously. Thank you for the opportunity to be your partner, Panginoon, in the ministry and in advancing your kingdom here on earth. We are giving today knowing and believing, Lord, that you are taking our, uh, our gifts, Panginoon, our offerings, our giving, and then using it, Lord, for the glory of your name. We bless you, we magnify you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can give for you can come to the front and then uh, drop your offerings here. There's also a late offering box on the lobby. And for those online, these are the bank accounts that you can transfer to. Hallelujah. Let's give. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Hope. Yeah. And thank you all for your continuous giving unto the Lord. Your giving enables us to do a lot of ministry, not just here in Makati, but all throughout the different places that God allows us to do ministry. And part of your giving, of course, gives, uh, goes also to the improvements that you see in our building. You know, praise God. It has taken us a while because, as you know, late last year, all of the restrictions and everything, there were things that we are not able to, to get done as fast as we want to. And then uh, as the new year entered, bigla namang nag-Omicron, so again, it pushed us back. But thank God, as you look around, things are improving, not yet where we want it to be, but we are on phase two. Wow, phase two. Uh, may phase three pa, nasusunod. Equipments are also being improved. And so, thank you all for your giving. Thank you all for your patience. Ayan. Praise God. Go ahead and give thanks to God. One of the blessings of God, of course, is that we have this facility and we have to take care of it. So, happy Independence Day again to everyone. Uh, it, it is a blessing, by the way. You know, sometimes you don't know what you have uh, until you lose it, for example. You know, you don't, you don't realize what a blessing health is until you become unhealthy. You know, you don't realize how great it is to have friends until you don't have any. You know, so thank God that we are free in our nation to worship. We are free to serve God. We are free to share the Word of God. All of those are blessings. So we are continuing our series on the God-centered life. We are now uh, in the part where it says to have what God wants me to have. So I want to review it again. The God-centered life is to be who God wants me to be. That's our identity. Who are you in Christ? And then to do what God wants me to do is our purpose. What did God create you to do in your life? Today, we'll talk about our sense of security. Because sometimes we think, you know, if I just had a better job, I'll feel more secure about my life. You know, if, if I just have more money in the bank, I'll feel more secure. You know, if I just lived in a certain community where there are security guards everywhere 
and you have to have a visa to enter the village, you know, I'll really feel more secure, okay? Uh, but then I know of people who have a lot, have a lot of wealth, have a lot of cars, have big bank account, live in uh, gated communities where not only is there a security guard at the gate, there is a security guard in the house, you know? So, so you have all of those and yet they still feel very uncertain about their life and their future. And then next week, to know what God wants me to know. And then finally, on the last Sunday, to go where God wants me to go, that will be our missions Sunday. So today, I just want to have what God wants me to have. And we'll be honest with ourselves and with God and with other people. I'm sure all of us will say, you know what, Pastor Albert, to be honest, I do wish I had a better job. <laughs> I do wish I have a better career. I do wish I have a bigger bank account. I do wish that I, I can go anywhere in the in the country and in the world and not have to worry about, can I afford it? You know? So all of us in our heart of hearts wish we had more. And sometimes we don't always get what we have, right? There was a commercial many years ago, you know, uh, no, that you can have everything. Well, that's not true. If that were true, then it should have happened already. I have yet to meet a person who has everything. And so Philippians chapter 4 is our main text today. We'll examine it as well as other parts of Philippians. Paul is writing here and he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. So Paul is saying, Oy, hindi ako nagpaparinig, I'm not saying this to make you, to force you to help me out. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. Wow, you know that last verse, if you had been following the Saturday night doctrine service, that verse was sort of like studied last night. And I want to pick up on that as well. There is a very famous basketball player that's still playing in the NBA Finals right now and just uh, scorched the other team yesterday, scoring 43 points. He not only is a great player, he is also a born-again Christian. He testifies to everyone about his faith, Steph Curry. And his sneakers, uh, his sneakers, right and left foot, you know, have this verse, Philippians 4.13. One shoe, the right side, I think it has the part that says, I can do everything or I can do all things. The other shoe, the left side, has the second part which says, through him or through Christ who gives me strength. Now, people have misinterpreted that verse to mean that they can do really anything and God will empower them. So, for example, if I were to buy those sneakers, which by the way, I would not because it's very expensive. Okay, yung sneakers ni Steph Curry na yun. But if I did and I wore it and I said to myself, you know what? I think I can shoot the ball like him. After all, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Not only that, I'm wearing the shoes. It must be the shoes, right? So, but that's not true. That's not true. Even if I wore similar shoes like that, for example, and then went to the gym and said to myself, you know what? If Heidelin can do it, I can do it. And then start lifting those weights, which by the way, many, many moons ago in a galaxy far, far away, uh, when I would regularly go to the gym, I do remember lifting some weights. Not that heavy, by the way. Certainly not, you know. But I do remember, you know, improving going higher and higher and higher in the weights. Wow, you really feel good, no? Once you start lifting, wait, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds in those, you know, chest, you know, getting, ah, you know. And then, of course, I stop because, you know, that's what we do. We stop, okay? <laughs> and then I did not go to the gym for over a year. Uh, and then I came back. At the the uh, instructor, tamabang pangaral, instructor ba yun? You in the gym was a good friend of mine. By the way, that's why I got into the gym because he gave me a one-year free subscription. <laughs> so, Albert Libre, you know, you can come here really every day if you want for free, you know. Uh, so, so nag-expire na yun. So, sabi ko, I cannot go. So, sabi niya, balik ka ulit. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take care of So, I did. So, pagbalik ko na ron, sabi niya, give me the hundred. Come on. Give me the hundred. I can do it. 
Because that was what I was lifting more than a year ago. But then I stopped. Sabi niya, Albert, you're my friend. You cannot. Sabi, no, kaya ko yan. No, you cannot. You stop for a year. You have to go back to the beginning. Okay, what do I lift? You see those colored dumbbells? Have you ever been to a gym and seen those colored dumbbells? Yung five pounds, ten pounds, yung kulay pink, kulay green, kulay gray. You know, sabi niya, Albert, yun, ilift mo. Kakahiya naman. And then I saw some women in the gym lifting the hundred. And I said, jahi naman to. So, but I, I followed because you have to be, you have to follow the instructor. He knows better. So I did. But then when I came back and gradually I was able to go back to the weight that I wanted. The point here is this. Just because the verse tells you that you can do everything through Him who gives you strength, that does not mean that you can now paint, that you can now, you know, I'm an accountant, you know what, I can, I think I will apply for a job as an engineer because I can do everything through Him who gives you strength. No. If you're a student and you have an exam tomorrow, I will not study tonight. Anyway, I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. No. Don't misuse that verse. That verse is connected to the previous verses that talk about contentment. So if you'll allow me to paraphrase that verse, this is really what it says. I can handle anything that life throws at me through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. That means you may go through a very difficult thing in life and it will not defeat you because Christ in you, the hope of glory, will cause you to be more than a conqueror. Amen? By the way, yesterday we had the men here for our men's assembly. And one of them was talking about, you know, marriage. And I was almost very tempted to raise my hand and say, hey, I have something, you know, it's a verse where the man says, you know, I am a conqueror. But my wife says, I am more than a conqueror. Yeah. <laughs> so in the end, talo ka pa din, mister. You are a conqueror, your wife is more than a conqueror. So today, I want to talk about contentment. Contentment is the key to living a blessed life. Contentment. In Tagalog, yung makontento ka sa buhay. Now, Paul says, I have learned the secret. So apparently, it is something you can learn. It's something not inborn. It's not something that from the moment, of, from childhood, you already say, you know what, I'm content. No, it, you have to learn it. In fact, even as a Christian, after being born again, it's not something that's automatic. Paul, the apostle, says, I have learned. Meaning, you can learn it too. Turn to someone and tell them, hey, we can learn something new today. We can learn. We can learn something new. So how does the secret work? First, a contented person is thankful. I have yet to meet a person who has contentment that complains and complains and complains about anything and everything in life. Now, all of us have been guilty of complaining. Would you agree? Yes. All of us have experienced something and, man, it upsets us. Traffic, you know, or somebody cutting into us when we're driving. Somebody steals our parking. That happened to me many moons ago. Right after the worship service, we're going to McDonald's in Alabang, and, and it, the parking is full. Finally, there's a car that's like backing up, exiting. So you position yourself and you press your hazard lights to indicate what? Hey, I'm, I'm waiting here. That spot is mine. Okay? So as soon as the car exits, I'm about to go in and another car whoosh, takes my parking. Guess what this pastor is about to do? I'm rolling down the windows of my manual car before. Eh? Man, uh, ro you're rolling down the windows. I'm about to say something. Out comes this lady, Pastor Albert. Thank you for your preaching about patience today. And in my heart, I really wanted to tell her, excuse me. <laughs> Tapos na yung church. <laughs> Not counted na to. Okay? Tapos na. Not counted now. Whatever I'm about to do or say right now is not counted anymore. No, no, no. But thank God, there was enough pause for me to like collect myself. Because really, while I was rolling down the window, I was already rehearsing my speech. Right? How many of you are guilty of the same thing? Right? So all of us can fall into that. 
The problem with that is if it prolongs, if it stays in your heart, and the complaining becomes a grumbling, and it just goes on and on, day after day after day, and then I thank God really that He does not deal with us as our sins deserve, according to the Bible. Neither does He even deal with us the way He dealt with the Israelites in the Old Testament. Otherwise, if you grumble the next time, you know, you're in line, tagal naman dito sa Makdo, etc. And then all of a sudden, the ground opens and you get swallowed in, just like in the Old Testament. Or snakes come out to bite you. So thank God. So a contented person is thankful. Find something to thank God for every day. And if, and if you'll be, if you'll just pause and say, Lord, these two years has been tough. It's pandemic, you know. How many of you recall those, uh, the ECQ moments where only one person is allowed to go out to buy groceries? And to, to the, some, of, some couples that I know, uh, only the man knows how to drive. And so the, the wife cannot go out, so she gives a list to the husband. And how many husbands are here like myself? Even if your wife gives you a list, you still don't know what to buy. Right? Cooking oil. Oh my gosh, there are 10 kinds of cooking oil. There is canola oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, olive oil, anong oil? You know? Laundry soap. Oh my goodness. There's Ariel, there's Thai, there's... What do you buy? So, Barbara already knows this, you know. Uh, once I'm in the grocery and she gets a call from me, she knows already. So, ano na? <laughs> ano <laughs> Because I, I've learned my lesson. I'd rather ask than go home and bring home the wrong item. Right? So, sino dito mga kalalakihan katulad ko that we love our, li our wives, uh, our, we love our wives and our lives. <laughs> because we know our life will be in danger <laughs> if we ever bring home the wrong thing. And yet, think about this, my friends. How many of you, you know of someone that died from COVID? As in literally, you know someone, family or friend, etc. Yeah, you're still alive. God has kept you alive. More than a million people have died from just COVID alone, not counting all the other sicknesses. That you are healthy, generally healthy, right? You're able to get out of your house, come to church, go to work, buy, go around uh, places. You're healthy. Thank God many other people are not. You know? That you have a job. Oh, but my job only pays this much. Hey, even that is even more than what other people may have. Oh, ang mahal ng gas. Yes, but you have a car. Some people don't have. So they don't have to walk. You know. Oh, you know, I cannot buy the new shoes. But you have feet. Thank God. So if you really just pause and say, God, I really have a lot of things to thank you for. And one of the greatest blessings, of course, you have a church. Isn't it amazing? The body of Christ is a blessing. One of the things that happened in this pandemic, especially in the beginning, is as the government says, for example, uh, you can only go out for essentials, essentials, grocery, etc. The church became, in the minds of a lot of people, a non-essential. A non-essential. Anyway, you can do it online. So those online, God bless you. Thank you for being part of this. But we wish that you were also here. Because I tell you, church is essential. Spiritual matters are just as essential as the physical matters. Jesus said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, a contented person is thankful. A thankful person is free. That's the second part. A thankful person is free. Why, Pastor Albert? How, how does that work? Listen, if you have a thankful heart, you will be free from the stress and the burden of constantly worrying about life. Because every time you realize life is tough, you realize God is tougher. Every time you realize life is bad, you realize but God is good. Every time you realize, my goodness, life is just so difficult, but the grace of God is always sufficient. And so you're freed from all of that that burdens and worries a lot of people. And then a free person is happy. A free person is happy. Once you are freed from all of those worries, anxieties, etc., you feel light. There's like a jump in you, right? There's like a the bubbliness in you that say, you know what? I think I can face this. I've gone through worse before. 
and God has carried me through. I think I can get through this also right now. Amen? Tell the person near you, you've gone through worse before. You've survived. You've survived worse. You can get through this. So, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And a happy person is generous. Say that word with me. Generous. Oh my goodness. I have yet to meet a person who is miserable that is a giver. I, I have yet to meet one. Because when the joy of God is filling your heart, it is much easier to give. Not just to give in church unto the Lord, but to give to anyone in need. The reverse is also true. A miserable person is stingy. Kuripot. Okay? Yung taong palaging inakasimangot, kuripot. Yung taong palaging inakangiti, mas mapagbigay. Sa totoo lang. I have yet to meet a person na nakasimangot ng ganyan, sige na nga, magbibigay na ako. You know. <laughs> That's why Paul says, be a cheerful giver, not a tearful giver. <laughs> Giving na naman. You know. Not a tearful giver. Cheerful. Why? How can you be cheerful in giving? Because you know God has given you so much more. In fact, has given you the greatest gift of all, the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. You are saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus, not by the works you have done. That alone is enough. If God does not give you anything else in life, that alone is enough to make you a grateful person. And a happy person is generous. Amen? And then a generous person is blessed. You know why? Because Jesus said, this is the principle, it is more blessed what? To give than to receive. And I never knew that until I actually got saved and was discipled. And that's why it's very important. Discipleship is very important. No, This thing don't, doesn't come automatically. I remember reading a story of this was maybe over 100 years ago in the U.S., a, an American church, a, an African-American church. In the days when uh, newspapers were printed and you can put an advertisement of your church. And so the owner of the newspaper... Uh, was a friend of the pastor. He said, Pastor, I'll give it to you for free. I'll give you like one-fourth page or something. Advertise our church community in the newspaper. So he did. He sent the write-up and it appeared in the newspaper. And it went something like this. If it was, for example, Beginnings Church. It said, you know, we in Beginnings Church, Makati, invite all of you to come and worship with us. In our worship of God, three books are important. The holy book, the hymn book, and the check book. Please come to church and bring all three. <laughs> the holy book, of course, is the Bible, the hymn book, because we don't have technology, so you literally sang the songs out of the hymn book. But why the checkbook? Because that pastor understood. Worship is not just singing, and it's not just listening to the Word of God. It is acting. And one famous author, John MacArthur, said, we need two conversions. The conversion of the heart, and the conversion of our wallet. Pastor Alberta, masakit yun. Ha? But it is something for us to ponder on. Has your wallet been converted by the Lord? A generous person is blessed. And so look at this chart, this drawing, the best that I could come up with. Uh, when God spread around the gift of art, I was absent. And so thank God for computers that it can do this for me. Contentment leads to thankfulness, which leads to freedom, which leads to happiness, which leads to generosity, which leads to blessedness. Now, keep that chart up for a while. Let's reverse that. When you don't have contentment, when you're constantly grumbling, complaining about life, dissatisfied, it will lead you, instead of thankfulness, to being a warrior, to being someone who's always under siege, by the insecurities and the uncertainties of life. When that happens, you will not be free. You'll be a slave of everything that happens. Oh my gosh, that's not And then Russia war, who? And then may nangyaring ganun, who? Na naghiwalayan si ano, who? And then nagdemandahan sa, ano, sa courtroom yung magdaw, who? Bahala na kayong alamin kung sino yung mga nire-refer ko, no? <laughs> but if you're not careful, Every single thing will steal your joy and steal your peace. So you won't be free. When you're not free, you will not be happy. How can you be when you are 
weighed down by the burdens of life. And when you're not happy, you will not be generous. You will hold on to every single centavo. It's like my pamangkin before. He said, Tito, can you buy me cheapy? You know, that snack, cheapy. So I gave her money. She bought cheapy. And then when she came back, sabi ko, oh, can I have some? So she opened it with her face like this. Handed it to me. And I tried to get one out. But I could not. You know why? Kasi ang kapit niya sa chippy is like this. Ito, tito, oh, you can have some chippy. Wala, wala ako mabunot. Maski na, maski na one piece of chippy, I cannot. And that's how many people are with God. Lord, please give me a job, a business, career, etc. God does. And then God says, all right now, can I have some of it? Here it is. And God is trying to get one chippy out of your bag. And he could not. <laughs> By the way, this is not the stance of a worshiper. This is the stance of someone who's against something. The stance of a worshiper is this. Hands lifted up, open. Open to surrender to God, whatever is in us. And open to receive from God whatever God has for us. So when you're more generous, you're more blessed. When you're blessed, you become more content and then it's just a cycle. Now, what contentment is not? We have to address this because there are people who think, okay, why are you not doing anything? Why are you just standing around? Because I'm content. <laughs> why aren't you studying? You have an exam tomorrow. I'm content. You know? Why aren't you looking for a job? There are job openings. I'm content. <laughs> no, no, no. Contentment does not mean not having ambitions or aspirations in life. Hey, have ambitions, have aspirations. Try to set a goal of what you want to accomplish in a year, two years, five years, ten years, etc. You know, when I was uh, much younger, in my early 20s, you know, I would write these things down. You know, I want to get married by this age. I want to do this and like that, you know. So, so I would write that down. I like a five-year goal. How many of you ever done that, by the way? You would like a five-year, you know. And sometimes, some things are delayed, di ba? Naka-five ka na and then it didn't happen. But then some things are advanced. Naka-three years pa lang, it happens already. And so, I remember as a young single Christian, I would say, Lord, King David said one thing I ask of the Lord. So I'll be more bold. I said, I'll ask for three. Lord, a wife, a house, and a car. I'm good. A wife, a house, and a car. Not in that order, any order, but wife, house, and a car. At the time, I was living with an American family uh, because I live in QC and our church at the time was in Alabang and so it was just too far and too expensive. So an American family adopted me. They were a husband and wife. Uh, they don't have a child. They said, you can live with us. You have an extra room. And when I shared that uh, with him, and he said, well, Albert, you can live in our house and you can ride in my car, but my wife is mine. So I'll pray that God gives you the wife first, you know, because the other two can come later. And so the Lord answered my prayer, brought to me my wife, Barbara, imported from Hong Kong, brought here, you know, Tivano, import, wow. <laughs> but contentment does not mean not having ambitions or aspirations in life. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, I'm still not all I should be. I'm not there yet, but I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Does that sound like a passive contentment? Anyway, you know, if God really wants it to happen, it'll happen. I'll just sit here. No, I press on. Paul is doing something towards a goal. Have a goal and set your mind towards it. Young people already have a goal. Our first goal, by the way, is to finish school. Um, as my wife would, would always tell our children, don't bring home a diploma and a baby. You know, so, uh, diploma muna, tsaka na yung, you know, relationship can come after. Alright, so, finish school. And then after that, then you can do the other parts. No? What contentment is? Contentment means to be at peace with what God gives you and where God places you. And this is something to learn. Because all of us, uh, have you ever heard the phrase, you know, the, the grass is always greener, right? On the other side 
right? So, parang, Lord, I, I have this job. I don't really like this job. He has that job. I think I like that job. In fact, I think I can do better than him in that job. You know? And so, the discontent becomes envy. And the envy turns into something worse even. That you would even try to manipulate situations in order to grab something that was belonging to someone else. So instead, you're saying to yourself, God, I'm ha I have this job. It's not the ideal job, but I thank you for this job. If you'll give me a better job, praise God. But if not, I'll stay here as best as I can, and I will be a witness and a light and a salt as best as I can while I wait for if and when God will give me a better job or a career. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Paul says, you know this passage, do not be anxious about anything. Lord, I want, I want a better this, a better that. But in everything, by prayer and petition, take note, with thanksgiving. Can you say those two words? With thanksgiving. You know, a lot of us, our prayers are not answered because we only do the prayer and the petition, but we don't thank. God, I want this. I deserve this, by the way, you know. I serve in ministry. I give. I do this. I do that. So please make sure that I get this by Friday of next week. Wow. May deadline pa. You know. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. What's going to happen? And the peace of God, which transcends in other translations, which will guard, uh, sorry, which transcends all your understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That word will guard talks about a Roman sentinel. Someone who will truly fight off everyone who is attacking it to make sure that the thing that they're guarding is secured. God's peace will be guarded in your heart and in your mind. Your, God's peace will guard all of the anxieties and worries away so that you will have the peace of God in your heart. So, what does that mean, Pastor Albert? Do I just stay where I am on, or do what I'm doing, etc.? Yes, until God says otherwise. I, I remember hearing this from early on from, from a pastor. He said, so how, how would I know? He said, uh, until you receive new direction, stay in the old direction that you got. Until you receive new instructions, stay in the old instructions that you got. Until God says otherwise, just keep doing what you're doing. Because if God, in His right uh, timing and plan, determines that it's time for you to do something else, to move, etc., God will indicate it to you. I wrote this in my book and I said, so whether God blesses us with much or with little, our hearts must always be thankful. We must always remind ourselves that all these earthly possessions are fleeting and passing. We must not lose focus. We must seek the giver and not the gift, the healer and not the healing, the blesser and not the blessing. Amen. And again, this is something to learn because even as Christians, we can get stuck on the things. So Jesus would remind us in Matthew, right? Seek first. Above all, priority of life. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the other things that you'll need in life. And by, by the way, not just needs. In my own experience, I've come to realize God in His grace will even grant you the desires of your heart. Meaning you can live without it, but God is so gracious, He blesses you with it. Amen? I mean, if you'll be honest, you don't really need that many pairs of shoes. Oh, Pastor Albert, ah, walang ganyanan, walang ganyanan. Wag, wag shoes. Oh. Or anything else in life. You don't need to have those very delicious food. You can survive on just the bare minimum. And yet, how many of us in our lifetime have experienced the goodness of God to give us so much more than even just our needs, but even the desires of our heart. And so over the years, Barbara and I have held on to this passage in Psalm 35, 27, which says, The Lord be exalted, who delights in the well-being of your servant. God delights in your well-being, my friends. When you do well, God, your Father in heaven, delights in that. It takes and gives him great joy to see you do well in life. And so an old hymn, it's called Count Your Blessings, says it this way. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. I want to end with this. Can I ask the worship team to come? The serenity prayer is very familiar to many of us. We see that in posters, you know, in refrigerator magnets. 
But for most of us, including myself, until I researched this, we only know the first part. This is the first part. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. How many of you have ever heard that before? The serenity prayer, right? But that's just the first part. Ang ganda pala if you continue. The next part says this, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as He did, meaning as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that He will make all things right if I surrender to His will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with Him forever in the next. Amen. Wow, isn't that beautiful? That God, it's a, it's a prayer. This man, by the way, is a German pastor and theologian. His prayer is that God, you know, not everything I want in life is happening right now. But to just, just give me the serenity. Just give me the peace to accept. If I cannot change my circumstances, that I'm willing to accept it. But the courage, if I can make a change, I'll do it. And then the wisdom to know when to accept and when to try to make changes in my life. And yet also recognizing that when Jesus came to earth, He was persecuted. Life was hard for Him. Not everything went according to as we would think in human terms. No, I have friends who will not betray you. Well, no. Jesus had someone betray Him. Someone deny Him. Have people you help be there when you need their help. No. Jesus fed the multitudes. None of them were there to rescue Him when Pilate was offering a choice. Who do you want to be crucified? Barabbas or Jesus? You would think the 5,000 plus plus people were there rallying. Set Jesus free. He's a miracle worker. None of them were there. So you have the situation where Jesus accepted the will of God as tough as it is because He knew God, His Father, had something better that He is working out. And then trusting that God will make things right. I, I read this also, and you might have read it also in Facebook or somewhere, where it says this, in the end, God will make all things right. If it's not yet right, it's not yet the end. <laughs> in the end, God will make everything right. So if it is not yet right, it's not yet the end. You're still in process. God is still doing something in you and around you. So you just have to trust in Him. Can we stand right now? Contentment is the key to living a blessed life. And it comes from living the God-centered life. Jesus at the very center. And so we will sing this song first in worship and then after a while, I will make an invitation. But just think about this, my friends, what I've said already today. God should be your highest pursuit above all. That you desire Him above all. Not just the things that you can receive from Him, but Him, God and God alone. Because when you truly desire Him above all, when you live the God-centered life, everything else that you need and even may desire, God in His grace will grant them to you. So let's worship the Lord with His song. Amen. Hallelujah. Draw us close, God. Let this be the prayer of your heart right now. Never let me go. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Lord Jesus, you are our highest desire. Lord. 
song again but if you're here today and you're carrying with you a burden your worries anxieties fears about life life now and even life in the future for your family for yourself we want to pray for you right now that God will give you his peace that passes all understanding but it is required that you surrender to him these burdens Jesus said come unto me all of you that are weary and burdened I'll give you rest so we want to invite you here if you're carrying with you some kind of burden and you cannot function anymore because you are weighed down by anxiety and worry, fear and stress. Come down here. We'll pray for you. Let's continue to worship the Lord. And as we worship, please come. Lumapit tayo sa Panginoon kung meron po tayo may dinadal ng kamigatan sa buhay. Sa ating pamilya, whether it's our health, our job, our family, our finances, kung ano man yun. Lapit natin yan sa Panginoon, kapatid. Huwag tayo mahiya. Those of you that are uh, uh, up the stairs, you can make your way down. We will pray for you here. Thank you, Jesus. Ikaw ang nais ko. Panginoon, ikaw ang minanais namin. Higit sa ano mang bagay. Hangat ng puso ko Kung meron pa po, huwag po kayong mahiya Kung meron kayong kasama, samahan ninyong lumapit You don't have to carry that burden with you as you leave the church later You can surrender those burdens to the Lord Yes, Lord Jesus Kahit panalayo Diyos, inilalapit po namin sa inyo ang aming kapatirang nasa harapan. Lord, you alone know the burdens of their heart. You alone know what is this weight that is pressing down on them. And you also know how long they have been carrying this. Some of us can carry almost anything as long as it is only for a short time. But when it prolongs, the burden gets heavier and heavier and heavier. You alone know how long they have been carrying this burden. 
and even to the rest of the congregation and those online. God knows the burdens that you carry. God knows the pains, the sufferings, the difficulties. God knows the needs that have not been met. God knows the desires that have not been met. God knows the, the disappointments that you have in life, the pains and the betrayals and all. God knows. God knows. And our God is here today to tell you, give those to me. Give those to me with thanksgiving. And so, Lord, we thank you today that we have a God in heaven who cares for us. So we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And so, Lord, we give these to you and in exchange, we ask for the peace of God that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and our minds, but also guard our household. Lord, sometimes when we are carrying a heavy load, it leads to quarrels and conflict. Pati mag-asawa, nag-aaway. Parents and children get into conflict whenever some things happen in, with one person in the home. So God, we also pray that the peace of God will guard our household. And that you will expel worry, fear, anxiety from our lives. That you would expel even that conflict, you know, that, that arises and the words that are painful and hurtful that come out of our lips because of that. Lord, would you cleanse our hearts of, of all kinds of junk, bitterness, resentment, envy, greed, anything, even unbelief that causes us to doubt the faithfulness of God because you are a good God, Lord. You are faithful. You are true to your word. And so we receive the peace of God that passes all understanding. We also receive the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. The joy of the Lord, which will cause us to find contentment in any and every situation. So that whatever life throws at us, we can overcome it through the strength that Jesus Christ gives to us. So we receive that, Lord, today with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. I don't want us to go home yet. I want us to sing again that Tagalog joyful song we started with. Kantahin natin ulit ito sa Panginoon, even as maybe some of our leaders can continue to pray with them. Alika, worship ulit tayo sa Panginoon. Let's sing the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
online. Join us next Sunday. Father's Day next week. Bring your dads, titos, lolos, kuyas, that are tatays. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Amen.